Moving right along as we continue reading The Energy Bus by John Gordon. Chapter 27, Love Rules. As George walked toward his building, he glanced at the sheet of paper Jack had given him that featured the five ways to love your passengers. The rules intrigued him so much that he stopped at the bench just outside the door, sat down, and began reading intently. If I've got a love to give, I need to start giving it today, he thought. So I better learn all I can right now. Here's what George read. Five ways to love your passengers. Number one, make time for them. When you love someone or something, you spend time with them. You nurture your relationship with them. You can't nurture business relationships sitting at your desk, just as you can't spend quality time with your spouse if you're watching television. So the key is to come out of your office and get to know your team. Spend time with them. Meet with them individually. Get to know them as people, not numbers. Just as you would tend to a garden, you need to cultivate your team with love. And while you are with them, it is important to be present with them. Be engaged in the present moment. Don't be thinking about 10 things you have to do that day or the 10 other people you need to meet with. Really be with that person and focus your energy on them. They will feel the difference. Number two, listen to them. One of the most important factors that determines a high management approval rating is whether the manager listens to the employee. Does the manager hear what the employee has to say? Does the manager listen to the ideas and needs of the employee? Your employees and customers just want to be heard, so listen to them and hear them. We're not talking about the some activity listening class technique either. We're talking about really sitting down and listening with your heart and caring about what they have today. Empathy is the key. When employees feel seen and heard, there is a moistening in the eyes. Yet researchers estimate that in more than 95% of daily interactions, there is no moistening in the eyes, according to High Energy Living by Robert K. Cooper. For instance, when you ask someone how they are doing, an easy way to show you are listening is to actually wait for the answer and make eye contact. Number three. Recognize them. We don't mean trophies or some awards dinner. We want you to make it real personal. Honor them for who they are and what they do. Recognize them as a person as much as a business professional. One leader we know sends each employee a personal birthday card with a handwritten note. Not some electronic fake signature, but a real note. While it's not possible to do this in every company, every manager can do this with their team. Another company allows employees to choose the UPC codes for their new products. Employees choose codes that feature their birth dates, anniversaries, kids' birthdays, and so on. This makes it very personal. Another very powerful way to recognize them is to praise them when they are doing things right. The more you recognize them for doing things right, the more they will do things right. Feed the positive dog inside them and watch it grow. Number four, serve them. A great leader once said, the higher you get in an organization, the more it is your duty to serve the people below you rather than having the people below serve you. The key is to serve their growth, their future, their career, and their spirits so they enjoy work, life, and being on your best. The more you serve their growth, the more they will help you grow. Number five, bring out the best in them. We saved this one for last because it's the most important. When you love someone, you want the best for them. You want them to be successful and happy. You want to bring out the best in them. Thus, the best way any leader can demonstrate their love for their team is to help each person discover their strengths and provide an opportunity for that person to utilize them. When you create a system that provides a way for your people to shine, you not only bring out the best in them, but in the rest of the team and company as well. If you really want to love your team, Help them do what they do best. It's that simple. Chapter 28, Fear and Trust. George walked into his office building like he owned it, ready to love and inspire his team. But as he walked toward the elevator and thought about the mountainous challenge, make sure that's the right word, that lay in front of him, self-doubt reared its ugly head again as it always had. What if they don't love me back, he thought. It wouldn't be the first time love had gone unanswered. What if I can't inspire my team? What if I can't inspire myself? What if it's all too late? Fear consumed him and he felt like someone had hauled off and punched him right in the stomach. 
Doubled over and unable to breathe, he looked out the window and saw his bus driving away. He knew that what Joy and Jack had told him were powerful truths, but living them and making them real was an entirely different matter altogether. Caught between knowledge and action, George was paralyzed by fear. The elevator door opened and closed as he just stood there, unable to move. On the bus, he had felt safe, but now he felt like a chained gladiator, about to be thrown into a cage with a bunch of lions that didn't care about the bus rules. His mind was so preoccupied with his negative thoughts that he didn't notice a familiar rival standing in front of him, nervous and shaking. Michael spoke first. I know I quit, George. I know I told you that your bus is going to crash, but I've been doing a lot of thinking. And Jamie called to say that your bus is cruising now. She said the team has been talking and it's like you are a changed man and they're all excited. I'm here to ask for another chance, George. I know I can help the team. I know I can help you. George was trying to catch his breath. Stood up straight. Would it be a big mistake to give Michael another chance? He might still be an energy vampire, yet they really could use him now. George remembered reading an article about Richard Branson, who gave one of his employees a second chance, and the guy went on to become one of his most trusted leaders over the years. George's fear was dissipating. He was thinking more clearly now. Okay, you got it. I'll give you another shot but I need you to be a chief energy officer. Chief energy what? Michael asked. I'll explain upstairs. Just get ready for an incredible day. The elevator opened and Michael walked in. You coming, George? I'll be upstairs in a minute. Thank you for everything, Michael said with a sincere and humble look. I won't let you down. As the elevator started to close, George responded, It's good to have you back. George looked outside at the spot where the energy bus had dropped him off. He thought about what had just happened. Joy had just talked about looking for signs and letting them guide you on your path, and he couldn't help but wonder if Michael was a sign. Maybe Michael's asking for another chance meant that George's team was ready to follow him, and maybe his giving Michael another chance meant George was ready to lead and love his team. Michael was an absolute, or excuse me, Michael was an obstacle, but maybe this meant that the obstacles were dissolving. Joy had talked about being on the right path, and perhaps he was on it. Everything lining up to clear the way for his bus. After all, as in a movie or a dream, Michael had approached at just the right moment to wake George up and help him move past his fear. This vampire had asked to come back just when they needed him most. This made George think of the dream he had had the other night, and it all became clear. The dream had been assigned to letting him know to trust he was the driver of his bus, and he had a choice. The decision to keep Michael and trust him was a choice, and so was the decision to move forward with trust or stay paralyzed by fear. Sure, he was racing toward possible destruction of his career, and his bus could surely crash. But he had a choice to believe it was all going to work out or quit now. Jack had told him the, that energy the, excuse me. Jack had told him that chief energy officers overcome challenges by charging forward with trust and optimism. And that's what George was determined to do. Through trust, he knew he would tap into the ultimate GPS system, God's positioning system, and it would continue to guide him just as it had been guiding him all along. He couldn't ignore the signs. They were all pointing in the right direction. And the lights were all green, telling him to go. I'm not going to live with fear and let fear get in my way, he thought. After all, they don't call it a leap of fear. They call it a leap of faith for a reason. If I can trust in God, in myself, and in my team, then they can trust in each other and in me, he said to himself, as the fear he had felt earlier had turned into faith, and faith had turned into resolve. George then stepped into the elevator, and now... He was truly ready to take the leap of his life.